morning. The Ranter is back to go into yet another rambling diatribe with the news of the day. And uh, this time around it's going to be one of these short ones because it's just pretty much reaction in a little two little bits. So uh, I'm going to try to show some discipline and uh, do only a few minutes on one or the other. Starting with uh, <laughs> uh, Elon Musk's uh, Ill ill-advised uh, vote on whether or not he should step down or not. Um, maybe it was just because of so many melodramatic people who decided to quit Twitter over Elon Musk running Twitter that he thought that, uh, you know, if he had a vote like this, he would, uh, he would see more people wanting to keep him on as opposed to, uh, removing him. Uh, but no, it didn't turn out that way as it seems that in a, I guess it was like, what, 12 hours? In, in a vote that vote that he set up for in a time frame of 12 hours consistently the vote was like 57 to 58 percent in, in favor of him stepping down as is opposed to the 42 43 percent that wanted him to stay and uh, people are <laughs> having the uh, notion of setting their hair on fire over it and, and, and trying to get their way around uh, that vote because uh, he, he did these previous votes before one of them being reinstating Donald Trump onto Twitter and every time these votes happen they go the people have spoken Vox Populi uh, well this time around I didn't hear all well, the people have spoken Vox Populi now did I in fact, he's been kind of quiet since the vote. Now, I know he's been, you know, probably jet lag over, uh, you know, hanging out with uh, Jared Kirshner and uh, MBS at the World Cup. But, you know, just, just maybe you know, a little acknowledgement of his whole thing here. Well, it turns out that uh, another poster on Twitter that I guess he knows enough to reply to says, you know, only you know, you know, only the people with the blue check marks really should be doing the voting. And he says, "Yeah, you're right. Let's administer that. Let's do that." So I guess, um, despite the fact of him having a vote on uh, him staying or not, uh, he's going to ignore that Vox Popular idea of uh, of stepping down. You know, the people didn't really speak because it wasn't the proper people speaking. Yeah. Okay. My opinion on that is that I don't, I don't think it really matters. Uh, he's either he's gonna stay or, he's, or he was gonna go. Um, you know, one like let's say one theory that I would have on this is that uh, he just, was just doing this to test the water. That uh, wanting to know really how how many people are still on that that are pro him or against him. I mean, people are crying. Well, the, they didn't let the bots out. They just sent the bots out to vote because it's, you know, you keep, you know, there's a the majority of us as opposed to them. I mean, come on. They all left because of him. Where? Well, I don't know. It doesn't seem to work that way. Uh, and a kind of a reminder for y'all that uh, there seems to be more of of us than you. Sorry. I mean, just have more kids, I guess. But, uh, yeah, there's, other, there's other theories I have that maybe he was also doing this to try to, like, figure out how to gracefully leave. Because, as much as this was a vanity project and something to stroke his ego, that Twitter was a nice, fancy little toy. And that uh, for a CEO of this company, he's spending more time tweeting on this as opposed to actually running it and uh, selling a lot of money, selling a lot of stocks and money out of Tesla and did some internal stuff in the back that is not, not exactly doing well business-wise for him. That maybe he, this, this could have been an excuse for him to get out. I mean, what was the next theory? The next theory after this vote was that we saw on there is that who would he put? in place of him who when he steps out who he would he install um 
Was that how it worked? Uh, when he bought Twitter, was that he just they just sort of like, you Elon, come. I thought it was a whole big business arrangement back and forth, back and forth here. And the theory goes is that the people who were supportive of him wanted wanted to you know get, get vengeance on the libs again. So you know that they offer up names like Jared Kirshner to run it or one of the one of the Trump folk. And you know what? Okay, because that that would be a bit on the nose, I suppose, but. There you go, and just just do that. It's just 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 make it just make it as obvious as humanly possible that what Twitter is or Twitter is becoming, and just go from there and uh, see how many people stay, see how many people go. I mean, it's um, for uh, somebody who is an absolute free speecher. He seems to be banning people whose uh, uh, official professional opinion of him. Or at least, well, like in the press, uh, makes him twitchy. So, people who even ask him questions about stories get themselves banned off. That's interesting. And uh, also banning any references to any other social media platform. That's also sort of like Mastodon. So that's that's also interesting. So yeah, that's 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 just great. That's just wonderful. But in the end, I don't really think that this matters. I mean, I would be surprised if he actually did, you know, say, Vox Populi, the people have spoken, so therefore I shall step down. If he does, I mean, you know, no real, no real shame, no real harm on it that uh, if it was indeed, if, if you were really thinking indeed the people have spoken, and you you put yourself out on the line on it and somebody like Elon Musk who does a bit of gambling in terms of businesses and in the projects that he wants to do you know maybe maybe it is one of those things is that that you you give him kind of props for it that you know you're brave enough to to do this and have that vote but now we have the caveat of the only the blue checkers should be able to vote and he likes that idea that that's his nice little back door out of the whole situation now isn't it but you know for the brief shiny moment of doing that vote and the vote ending up the way that it did uh, it was entertaining all right that one story the other story that I want to go into today is oh the, the last day of the January 6th committee and their criminal referral that they have unanimous, unanimously voted on to about Donald Trump. Uh, give me a moment while I actually put up or actually rattle off the referral. So give me a moment to time out. Time in. All right. So, uh, In the last meeting of the January 6th committee, they voted unanimously to offer up to the D Department of Justice four criminal referrals for Donald Trump and Eastman and uh, some House Ethic Committee sanctions for four members of the Republican Congress who refused the, the committee's sub subpoena request to provide information about the events of January 6th. But, uh, hmm. <laughs> For the four referrals for Trump, it involves the obstruction, obstruction of an of official proceedings, conspiracy to defraud the United States, conspiracy to make false statements, and inciting and assisting an insurrection. Uh, pretty much, this if the DOJ went with this, this would mean that Donald Trump's a felon for them to be investigating and indicting so this is kind of pretty major this is the last gasp of the January 6th committee and this is the last card they can play uh, firstly to the house ethics portion of this 
unfortunately that's going to go nowhere because we are in the last literally the last weeks of December the last weeks of 2022 uh, Congress is going to roll over and be Republican controlled by January and so you can imagine those House ethics uh, issues for these four Republican congressmen and all that is because they'll get right on that um, I've already heard that there's going to be like a a Republican version of an inverse investigation so there will be a rebuttal to the January 6th committee with their own January 6th committee where it will be you know completely downplaying anything that Donald Trump does and actually no it was really Antifa yeah it was Antifa that did January 6th or even wilder is that it was Nancy Pelosi that did it Oh yes, because she was in control of the Capitol Police. So even though we have seen the evidence, we have seen proof, we've seen testimonies that for hours people were calling Donald Trump who was watching the riot unfold of his people that he had incited to go and attack the Capitol to stop the certification of the vote. Yeah, that was all Nancy Pelosi. Because the real victims were Republicans, as said by a Republican pundit on one of these uh, gerbil talk shows. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, people around Trump. Uh, people who know Trump. Uh, from people like Sean Hannity. People in Trump's orbit. People in his family was trying to contact him to tell him to do something about it and he didn't want to because these were his people fighting for him. He didn't want to impede them. He gave aid and comfort to them by not calling the National Guard. So there's your incitement of an insurrection charge right there. And all the other evidence that was picked up that supports all the other charges but again we'll see where this goes if the Department of Justice will actually do anything about it uh, going back and forth on Twitter on this a um, few people were just like oh that was lies but our but but when the Republicans take over the investigations will be 100% truth no oh, even though there's evidence of this it doesn't matter We just need to own the lips as much as possible. We have to. Because, <laughs> you know, why worry about, you know, your precious inflation and, uh, and gas prices and all the other stuff that you were blaming Biden for pre-midterms? You know, all the solutions that you were going to give to the, to the American people, the things that you were going to fix in order for people to vote for you, and your answer is just going to be investigations, investigations, investigations. Um, the, the, the people that were debating me is like, you know, made the wrong assumption of me that uh, I'm as scared about people investigating Joe Biden or Hunter Biden as they were scared of people investigating Trump and are crying tears of blood over it. Uh, no, I'm not. Investigate them all you like. Because here's the reality. And this is the reality that, unfortunately, the Democrats had to face in the instances that they did impeachment on Donald Trump. And the reality of the 2020 election, no matter how much y'all people think it got dumb stoled, didn't really get dumb stoled because, yeah, Joe Biden who won, a, won the majority of the vote to be president and won the Electoral College and and however you think that there's fraud in that if there was real fraud in that then the fraud would also affect the down vote and in the 2020 election I must remind you that we had a narrow advantage in the House coming out of that election and a narrow razor paper thin majority in the Senate policy wise we weren't going to be pushing anything that would survive without every Democrat on deck and make sure that it was an up or down 50-50 vote and 
some of those policies went down because certain Democrats who are only senators by virtue of, of being conservative enough in these conservative districts and or conservative states at the time, Joe Manchin and Krista Sinema, would haywire the vote. And that would be that. Then you see them fist pumping with Republicans. We see that now with Kristen Sinema, who after Warnock won his runoff and having the extra two Democrats in, on the Senate side here, nullifying whatever advantages or nullifying whatever Joe Manchin or Kristen Sinema could do in, in hijacking the vote away from Democratic policies here. Uh, Krista Sinema decided, oh, I'm going to be independent now. Now, she's still going to caucus with the Democrats as an independent. At least that's what she's going, that's what she's claiming. But uh, we'll see where that goes. In any event, people, uh, the, the sad reality, you know, is as it happened with the Democrats during the 20, after the 2020 election, uh, pushing anything policy-wise was hit or miss. It is really hit or miss for Republicans. And, yeah, uh, people still want to try to bring a positive out of the midterms for them. Is that, oh, yeah, you got the majority. Oh, yeah, you totally got the majority in the House. Will not take that away from you. Your majority, it, that was historic in modern American politics. Yeah, yeah, because you you were in a typical midterm, and I'm, I'm again I'm a broken record here because I've been saying this a lot. In a typical midterm, you get you that that does a turnover when an incumbent president and House and Senate is all the same party. Uh, the the typical logic is that the governing party loses four Senate seats and at least 40 House seats. So the swing back and forth like that. And this midterms, uh, the Democrats uh, gained two seats and uh, the Republicans did, did gain the House by a measure of, I believe, three. So Majority-wise, and as much as they fired Nancy Pelosi, they totally fired her. She, she's gonna be still in the room. She won her re-election. Uh, you're just, she's just gonna pass the gavel. But oh no, the American people just fired her. Okay, to calm down, you know, to have some cake, whatever. But uh, with your majority, you won't be able to push policy. Not really. Because whatever you do be able to pass in the House with your slim majority will die in the Senate. And if it does not die in the Senate, then it will die by presidential veto. And as much as you would like to avoid that, as much as you want to, like, you know, first day impeach Biden, once again, by our model, unfortunate, of, of, uh, uh, when the Democrats during the Trump administration regained their house and didn't have the Senate uh, you know, they tried to impeach Trump twice and couldn't get past the two-thirds threshold to remove in the Senate here's what reiterate, reiterate this one more time the Republicans in the majority in the House. They can play musical chairs with with committee chair who runs the committees. They can do their own January 6 investigation where it will be all about Antifa all the time. Uh, they will have investigations on Joe Biden. They'll have investigations of Hunter Biden. They'll have investigations of Christopher Ray. They'll have investigations on Merrick Garland. They will go after Dr. Fauci. They will go after the Easter Bunny. They'll go after the Noid from Domino's. All that is fine and well. They could even 
And they can even impeach Joe Biden. Yeah. Yeah. They can impeach Joe Biden on some real or imagined bullshit. Sure. And it will go nowhere. All it will do is make noise. And we know this. And you know this, Republicans. So that is the advantage. You can get you can spend the next two years, you know, watching Jim Jordan not wear a coat and ramble on on anything that has nothing to do with like a gymnasium in Ohio. And uh Go after the Bidens, go after the laptop, uh, do everything they can, have their committee meetings. But here's the thing. Democrats are going to be smart enough to have people in those committees. And unless you're going to kick them out. As you claim that there were no Republicans in the January 6th committee because you wanted none there. In an attempt to show that, oh, they shut out all the Republicans. This is a political witch hunt. Now, so when it's your turn, Democrats are going to show up. They'll sit in their chairs, and when it's their turn to speak, they're, they're going to you know, say, "Oh, this is this is just bullshit." <laughs> the same thing that you all would do. Again, all of this is just political theater, but the facts and nuts and bolts on the ground. Repu Republican House majority will not push policy and they have no intention of pushing policy they don't have any plans to helping anybody's lives all they want to do is investigate all the time and if they say otherwise if they say well we can walk and chew gum at the same time we can push things again uh, they if they survive the house they won't survive the senate if they survive the senate they won't survive the veto and even if you impeach Joe Biden, that will die in the Senate. So therefore, for the next two years, like it or not, Joe Biden will still be the one with the pen at the end, signing it into law or vetoing it. Enjoy your majority. In terms of Trump and his uh, criminal referrals, I will be pleasantly surprised if the DOJ does anything with it. The DOJ under Biden, maybe if you would say that there is enough of political bias, they will actually go through with it. Um, I don't know if they will or not. I don't. I'm hesitant in 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 thinking that they will. I think they should, because here's the thing, and it's hard to get around this. One of the hesitations that people show when they're approaching this subject, when, term, when it comes to Trump, is, uh, you know, what will happen? You know, this this uber popular person with, with a fan base. I don't know how uber popular he really is anymore. I think that just the fan base is just loud. But be that as it may, with enough of a vocal following of regular folk, pundits, uh, the sycophants or just, you know, get on social medias and just wrap glorious attention on him. What will happen to these people if their if 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 their favorite is, is indicted or if anything horrible happens to him? I mean the the again the one worry I have him actually coming back onto Twitter is because of his influence his rhetoric the nonsense that he says with no responsibility, with no track on reality. And once again, as I said, of the hundred, of the thousands of people that would be watching this stuff on Twitter, or what he says, or how he will, you know, mildly incite people, you know, telling that, you know, over there, the other people is to blame for their lot in life, be it the election or anything else. You know, to deflect on what, anything that he himself does. Out of a hundred thousand people, 
tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, it could be one, it could be two, in separate places, it could be more than that, that thinks that this loose-lipped bullshit rhetoric that he's just expanding out because he's an emotionally stunted 12-year-old in a 70-plus-year-old body will flip a switch and they may decide to go make America great again. Be it storming a capital to stop a certification vote or uh, driving to El Paso with a gun. So that could be a concern for people on, you know, if, if they go after Trump like this and, and actually slap the cuffs on him, it'll be a bloodbath. But the problem with that, of not doing that, is then you encourage and ins encourage what he does. And so then people watch and go, he's getting away with it. He's getting away with it, so therefore, I can get away with it. And then the next person can get away with it. See, once again, someone like Trump is not the cause of our political strife that we have. He's a symptom of what we have. This degrading, the decline of our country in terms of our politics. And... If you don't correct, if you do not put your foot down on saying what our laws are, what should be done, what shouldn't be done, if, if you just let people get away with it because of political expediency, then things happen. Bad things can happen. You know, complain about our discourse in politics, letting him skate. <laughs> letting him skate only makes things worse sure it might be scary at the prospects of what of people will react on him like you know them actually knocking on his door and slapping cuffs on and sending him to court to trial and you know some people might you know react violently towards that and want to plan violent things but you want you we can't live in fear of that though because then nothing will make sense nothing will matter it's the same thing as him running for president being president in 2024 we're all knowing that he did nothing on january 6 did nothing to stop prevent who in fact incited told people where we're going to march on the Capitol, I will go with you. He wants you to fight like hell. Then he waddles his way to the White House and watches as the Capitol burns. There's, if he was, if he's allowed to run again and win, none of this matters. Seriously, none of this matters. This means anything, any, any law we can circumvent, any, any acts, you know, all the stuff that I kept hearing about during the Trump administration that people complained about, people were going, oh, this could be a silver bullet too, but you do nothing about it. This just means none of that matters. And we just, let's skate coast to the bottom, which is the only disgrace. You know, we talk about a monuments clause. That didn't. Yeah, yeah we talk about. It. Didn't do anything about it. Doesn't matter. Hatch Act. Talked about it. Did nothing. Doesn't matter. He runs again. January for after what he did, what he didn't do in January six. None of this matters. And for the best of your sanity, if you were one of these people like me who uh, opposed the concept of Donald Trump once again becoming president, he becomes president again, that's it. Switch off politics. Switch it off. Because really, really it doesn't matter at that point. Because the concepts that we grew up with, right or wrong, ethics, 
the civics of our politics. No matter how corrupt that we could say our pol policy politics are, you know, you know, you know, with congressmen or senators, maybe we come on, come on suits with logos on them because of the lobbyists of certain places, from insurance on up, and other like economic uh, concerns, could be slapped on their back, so you know already how they're going to vote because they are the boys getting money from the lobbyists. As bad as your day-to-day -day thinking of our politics, it just gets worse from here. So my opinion on it is that they need to run with it. They need to run with it. He needs to... He needs to face what every other American faces. And not skate. Not use his influence or you know, the backhanded, you know, money in the pocket to get him out of things, you know, appeal his way to never be inside of a courtroom. How many regular people can do that? If regular people could do what Donald Trump has done for years, our jails, our prisons would be a lot less empty. Because we would be having so many people appealing their way, lawsuit their way, out of ever waddling their ass into a chair for a deposition or to be put on trial. It would always be this frustrating holding pattern. So, again, sort of circle back on this. I didn't realize I was going to make this this long, but there we go. <laughs> Which tells you how much I really give a shit about Elon Musk and Twitter. <laughs> In the end, you gotta bite the bullet here. DOJ, you get these referrals, do it. Run it. If it means indicting him, indicting him. There's plenty of stuff in the mar lago raid now. More stuff. More documents found. Only in the past week. More bullshit back and forth of him saying that he wants these documents back. Run with it. And let the chips fall where they may. And that's the thing, though. That's the thing. They don't... These people who don't want Trump anywhere near a courtroom who fears of a perjury trap for him because he just can't stop fucking lying. But the thing is, that you take him to court, you actually have this trial, and he's found innocent, then we gotta accept that too. Because in our fervor, including mine, in our further fervor, blah, blah, in trying to, you know, get some consequences and accountability and responsibility out of this guy that never felt it in his life we have to temper that with facts and truth if you got the evidence run it if you don't have the evidence but you have a theory run it however be ready to accept that Whatever you try to prove, if it's not, you know, hardcore on the ground, ironclad here, that goes beyond a reasonable doubt, then he's found innocent. Gotta accept that. You have to. That's our system. And, I mean, if you don't, you don't, but unlike, you know, other directions of our political our politics, especially on the extreme angles of those, what are we going to do? We're not the ones, you know, breaking into a, the Capitol building to stop a certification vote. We have less lone wolves who just flip a switch because simply because we don't have too many of our own pol politicians and our own pundits and our demagogues um, actually, you know, 
inciting people through rhetoric, loose rhetoric. We actually have responsibility of our words and our actions, our leaders do. Republicans used to have people like that. They used to have the John McCain's who would tell the woman who said that she couldn't trust Obama because she, was, she thinks how he was an Arab and he shut her down. You don't have any more Republicans like that. You don't have anybody like that with the political courage of setting the record straight. Not anymore. And again, that is the decline of our politics. And the last reminder, what I'm going to give before I actually land the plane here, of of the, of the Republicans now controlling the House, of anything, anything to do with policy that they could push that will live or die, the one thing this will, should do, should, is that it should remind Republicans and Democrats in, in, in one degree or another, the American genius of compromise. We need to stop this political partisan tribalism of one side or the other side. Because if it's all or nothing on one side, all or nothing on the other side, nothing is going to get done. You want you want something to be pushed, you got to compromise. You want something to progress, you need to compromise. Cuz I hate to break it to the Republicans, I hate to break it to the Democrats. We are all not one country here. Where it's, where it's all Democrats or all Republicans. Both sides matter. I mean, I have to remind people again on Twitter that uh, you know, when he talks about, oh, the American people, they did, they did this. The American people did thinks that. No. No, no, no. You see, you, you really should not generalize the idea of the American people all thinking one way, because we don't. We don't. When it talks about the masks, like masks for COVID-19, the people have spoken. No. I see people at my work come in in masks all the time. No, the people did not speak. The people that you agree with speak, so therefore you only acknowledge them as the American people, which is pretty sad and pretty pathetic of you. But uh, the thing is, is that the American people, some will agree, some will not, some will go, have a, sa go and have a sandwich, but either way, all are the American people. And in this environment, where we are all different people, all put together in this country, in order to progress anything worth a damn, of any value, you compromise. You do not get everything you want. I do not get everything I want. We, I get something. You get something. I concede something. You concede something. But agreement is made, and you push it forward. And then it gets written into law. And that's how the progress goes. It's not everything all at once. It is a little at a time. And that's what to say about that. Rant or rants, because it's morning and I felt like ranting. I'll see you in the next one, which will be two away from 100 videos. What will I do for my 100th? I don't know. And Gus is waking. Talk to you later.